There are a lot of animals that have gone to space. Most of them unwillingly strapped in against their will, with only 700 or so humans doing it willingly. Most of us know about the space dogs, the space monkeys, and even the space cats. But there are a lot of strange animals that have made it to space, and some of them even made it home again too. In this video, we'll talk about five animals that you might not expect have made that journey to space. While fascinating, it's also kind of sad that all of these animals made it to space when I probably never will. I mean, good for them, I guess. But if you're watching and you actually have been to space, and especially if you took any animals with you, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Either way though, let's get into some surprising spacefaring species. First up, let's talk about squid. Yes, squid have been to space. It feels especially strange when we take underwater animals to space. I don't know if that's just me, but I love how bizarre it feels. It just tickles my brain in that right way. But yes, in June 2021, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket took a squad of baby bobtail squid to the International Squid Station. These sweet little sea creatures, which are related to cuttlefish, took part in a few experiments on the ISS. The research program was called UMAMI, an acronym for Understanding of Microgravity on Animal-Microbe Interactions. UMAMI. The idea was to study how microbes interact with animals during spaceflight. Some of the squid were exposed to a microbe called V. fisheri, and some were not, so that they could act as a control group. This experiment was motivated by the fact that normal development of animal tissues and maintaining human health involves microbe interactions, and so maintaining healthy immune and digestive systems in astronauts is a top priority in space, and this was going to study that. Squid aren't the only water-dwelling creatures to have been sent to space either. In the 1990s, some baby jellyfish were sent to space on a shuttle mission to see how they coped with zero gravity. They largely figured out how to swim in space, but when they returned to Earth, they could not orient themselves at all, and got easily confused about up and down. This will be a common theme for animals going to and from space. It really seems to mess with their awareness and ability to navigate, although it will probably do the same to me. In 1973, a small type of fish called a mummy chog was sent to space on Skylab, making it the first ever fish in space, both in the form of live fish and eggs. The fish that were taken up alive struggled to swim around at first, but eventually figured it out. While the fish that hatched in space could immediately swim coherently. So that's pretty cool. More recently, in 2024, China sent zebrafish up to their space station. Despite some unusual behavior like inverted swimming and confused directions, these aquastronauts eventually seem to be able to thrive in space. Next up, let's talk about tortoises. Tortoises have been to space too, and not only that, but they were actually on the first ever flight around the moon in September 1968. There were two of them, and in a stunning change to the norm for animals in space at the time, both tortoises survived the flight and returned to Earth safely. This was a Soviet mission called Zond 5 that also carried flies, plants, and worms to see what could survive spaceflight. And after a week-long trip around the moon, it parachuted them back into the Indian Ocean. This was the first successful circumlunar mission. The tortoises were sent back to Moscow to debrief about the mission. And that's where the good times end for the tortoises. Despite surviving the flight, they did not survive the experiment, and they were dissected to study the impact of spaceflight on their bodies. To be honest, the results showed that spaceflight didn't have a big effect on the tortoises, except they were a little shell-shocked upon landing. But they were also starved during the mission, and that did have an effect, as you might expect. Control tortoises on the ground were also starved, and showed the same level of impact from the lack of food. More tortoises and turtles too followed these trailblazers into space on following Zond missions in the late 60s. But then for a while, there was a pause on creating new turtastronauts until Iran sent two more turtles to space in 2013. Number three on this list, and it's time to get small and leggy. By that, I mean spiders in space. The first spiders in space were a pair of garden spiders called Arabella and Anita. They flew on what's known as the Skylab 3 crew in 1973. And the experiment was largely to see if spiders could spin webs in space, and whether any webs built this way would be the same as webs spun on Earth. Cameras monitored the spiders and photographed the webs they produced. Yes, they could spin webs. No, they weren't as perfect as spider webs on Earth, but Arabella sure was trying her best, okay? 
It seemed to take the spider a little while to adapt to weightlessness, but after just a day in space, Arabella spun the first known spider web in space. The spiders were given food and water while in orbit, and webs were removed to allow for the construction of more webs. And those webs got more elaborate as the mission went on. While the patterns were similar to Earth webs, the space webs were in general made from thinner webbing, but the thickness also varied by a much greater amount than web thicknesses do on Earth, which are normally very uniform. Jumping spiders have also been to space, and while they adapted to zero G and could hunt on the space station, when they came back down and felt gravity again, it took them a little while to remember how to jump on space, and for a while, things like this kept happening. Other small creatures that have made it to space include the ever-hardy tardigrades, which were exposed to the vacuum of space and of course survived. Ants which saw colonies sent up to be compared to colonies on Earth, and also nematode worms. These small worms were actually on board the space shuttle Columbia, which broke up as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. This was a tragic incident in which all of the astronauts were lost and all of the experiments on board destroyed. Except, as it turns out, the worms. When wreckage from the crash was found, the section containing the worm experiment must have decelerated a good amount before crashing down. This allowed the worms to actually survive the impact and breed too. The lifespan of a nematode worm is very short, so by the time the wreckage was recovered and analysed, the worms that were found would have been several generations descended from the crash-surviving worms. Fourth up, we have newts. But not just any newts. Specifically, humans have tended to remove arms, legs, tails, and even eyes from the newts, and then send them to space. Newts are fascinating animals because they're able to regenerate limbs here on Earth. So an apparently natural question is, can these little dudes do the same thing in space? It turns out, yes, they absolutely can. Regrowing limbs and eyes seems to be in no way negatively impacted by zero G or by spaceflight in general. In fact, almost the opposite seems to be true. Newts in space often regrow arms, legs, tails, and even eyes faster in space than they do on Earth. Now, I'm not a newt biologist, and I don't quite understand the biology behind this, but it seems like a fascinating result to me. Newts are also not the only pond dwellers that have been to space. Frogs also made that giant leap. For example, in 1970, NASA sent two bullfrogs into space on OFO, the orbiting frog otolith. An otolith is a structure in the inner ear, and this mission was designed to study the effects of prolonged weightlessness on ear and balance systems of animals. This was studied in the frogs, but the idea was to apply the results to what humans may experience during their own prolonged space missions that occurred after this one. Fifth on the list is birds, and more specifically, quails. Just like underwater animals, I don't know why, but to me, it feels so weird to put a bird in space. Well, whatever your thoughts, quails have been in orbit on board the Soviet space station called Mir. First, some eggs were taken up to see if they could hatch after being in space. And then later, they took live quails up too. Eventually, they did manage to hatch some eggs in space, and quails took the record for being the first vertebrates to be born in space. Pretty cool. As for the live quails, there are some pretty cute and funny videos of them flapping around in zero gravity. These experiments were intended to study the effects of radiation on the development of embryos and animals, and to see if they could hatch and grow in space, to eventually understand whether quails could serve as a food source on future long-duration missions. While some eggs did hatch, the quails born were not interested in mating once they grew up, so they were eventually abandoned as a long-term food solution. They also couldn't eat on their own to begin with, mostly due to the weightlessness they kept floating around. And the crew had to eventually fashion some restraints to keep them in place and able to eat. There are also a few other instances of birds in space. Weirdly, KFC actually teamed up with NASA to send up some chicks on one of the space shuttle missions to study hatching chicks in space. My favourite part about the Chicks in Space mission is actually the mission patch, which looks like I've made it up, but I promise it's real. Just look at those feet on the rocket. Interestingly, adult pigeons have also been in zero gravity, but not quite in space, on the so-called Vomit Comet parabolic flight. You can see they struggle to orient themselves and know which way to fly, and one of them even ends up flying upside down. It seems that flying in any organized way is lost in zero-g. Those poor birds. When birds flap, it usually propels them upwards as well as forward, and gravity normally cancels out that upward motion. 
Here though, that's not happening, and chaos ensues. One bird that nearly went to space, but luckily didn't, was the Muppet's very own Big Bird. The puppeteer that played Big Bird in the 1980s was allegedly in talks to fly on the space shuttle in the costume, as a way to entice kids to be interested more in space. That mission would have been on board the Space Shuttle Challenger, which exploded just over a minute into its flight. It's mad to think that we were close to watching a Muppet be lost on that mission. Although the reality of the tragedy was of course awful too. I really didn't expect this video to mention both of the Space Shuttle disasters when I started researching it, but I hope you enjoyed learning all about the surprising animals that have been to space anyway. If I missed any crazy animals that you think should have made the list, do let me know in the comments. Feel free to leave me any questions you have down there too, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!